To sum up, in the first part of this course, representative oil painting fundamentals, we have seen some basic theory that we have used to explain things all over the course. We have seen the tools that we need so that you can choose your own painting equipment. We have seen the fundamentals. We have started painting easy using the abstract. And in this last chapter, we have seen all the things that we need to make our first representative work. In this last video, we're going to complete this painting. In particular, we're going to see the things that we need to get at the end of this scene representation. We're going to do the necessary reworking, and we're going to talk about the oil out process and why we want to do it. To continue our representation, we're going to work on the last part of the teapot where we have to complete the scene reflection. As we said, we're not going to go too deep in our representative analysis. So here we're going to represent the fruit pole reflection and somehow we're going to follow the rest. We're going to use some middle dark brown here to represent this area, some white here to represent this other area and some middle dark brown here. We're going to bring some crimson red here to represent the apple and the bowl reflections. We're going to use some orange here that we're going to lighten up with some Naples yellow. We're going to fill this area with some middle light brown. We're going to use some white here for this bright area. We're going to work the bold dark side reflection using some gray. We're going to use some white for the top ring and for this area. We're going to blend some red vermilion with the crimson red that we have on the canvas to lighten up just a little bit the apple reflection that we are also going to represent here on the top. And to complete our job for now on the teapot, we're going to complete the background in this area. We're going to start working on the bowl now where to represent the top ring, we're going to blend some light gray with some black. We're going to bring some black here to work on this dark area of the bowl, and we're also going to work this area on the left. We're going to use some white to represent these reflexes, some black here where the top ring is darker. We're going to blend some Naples yellow here to work on these reflexes inside the dark area and we're going to paint uniformly the orange. We're going to represent this reflex here, blending some white with the black, and we're going to blend some black here to get the middle dark gray that we need. We're going to blend some white here. To work the border with the cup below, we're going to start painting in white this area of the cup. We also start painting the cup top ring in white. We're going to blend some gray here to start representing this area that we're going to fade into the white here. We're going to use some burn humber to work on the coffee, where we're also going to paint this reflex. We're going to bring some crimson red here, where we're going to paint the apple working the borders with the background and the orange below. We're going to start bringing some white here where we have this reflex. We're going to use some gray here on the bottom plate, dark side, following what we see in our model. We're going to represent the cup handle. Now, we're going to bring some gray here to represent the dark side of the cup. We're going to blend it with some white and fade it. And on the right, we're going to bring some white and fade it. We're going to use some gray here and blending some white and some gray, we're going to cover the color that by mistake we brought on the canvas 
and we're gonna paint the cup's shadow on the plate. We're going to paint in white this area and using sun gray we're gonna work on the spoon's shadow on the plate. We're gonna start working on the spoon now bringing sun gray here and here where we're going to blend it with some white to get a light gray. We're gonna blend and fade some gray here. A drop of white here and one of black here that we're going to blend. Some white here, here on the light gray, here, here, and here. We're gonna work on the cup's shadow on the table where we're gonna bring some burnt amber. And we're gonna blend some middle dark brown here with some tan to work on the table. We're gonna continue our work on the bowl now by bringing some black here and fading it. We're gonna use some white here for this reflex and then some gray. We're gonna bring on the canvas some middle dark brown to start working on the X reflexes. We're going to bring some white here for this reflex. And bit by bit, working one piece at a time, we're going to complete for now our work on this bowl. We're going to blend some middle dark brown with some tan for this part of the eggs and we're gonna use some tan on the top. Then, using a clean rounded brush, we're gonna smooth the transition. We're gonna blend some middle dark brown on the eggs dark side, and we're going to repeat this job for the other egg, where we also start to use some white to lighten up the egg's bright side. We are also going to work on the last egg where we're gonna use some burnt amber for the gravy container's shadow and on the egg's shadow. We're going to complete our work on the spoon working on the handle where we are going to use some gray and some black here. We're going to go on with our work on the table and on the spoon's shadow. And we're going to complete the spoon handle. As we did for the bowl, using some gray, we're going to start working on the gravy container's base. Then, using some middle light gray that we get mixing on our palette, the gray that we have with some white, we're going to work on the container's top part. Using some brown and some tan, we're gonna work on the egg's reflection. And bit by bit, one piece at a time, we're going to complete the gravy's container. And then we're gonna work on the table and its connection with the background. To get at the end of this first part of our painting, we only need to work on the carafe, which is the only transparent item that we have in our scene. To start, we're gonna work on the caustic effect that the carafe casts here on the back. Then, we're gonna start bringing some middle dark brown here on the bottom part, and then we're gonna blend it and fade it with some burnt amber. We're gonna blend on our palette some middle dark brown and some Naples yellow to get the color that we need for the liquid that we have inside the carafe. And we're gonna start painting the top part. On the left, we have this dark area, so we're gonna use some dark brown. We're going to paint a distorted projection of the table through the carafe and then we're gonna work on the background projection using some middle dark brown. We're gonna use some yellow to warm the table projection up. 
we're gonna blend some middle dark brown with some burnt amber to get the color of the right side of the carafe and then we're gonna fade it we're gonna use some white to paint these reflexes on the carafe and then using some naples yellow we're gonna warm up the color of the background projection and one piece at a time we're gonna get at the end of our work on the carafe where we are going to paint the handle and these longitudinal lines of different colors. Now, the first part of our painting is complete, and if we were careful and accurate in this phase, we could say that our work now is over. But since at this point our experience is still limited, and we didn't do a really accurate job, we're going to do some reworks. So, we're gonna let our painting be there until it gets dry, and then we're gonna start our reworks. Reworking is also an opportunity to change things that we don't really like in our scene, but we have to be careful because they can also make things worse. As we already said many times, the first part of the reworks phase starts from the palette. In this case, we have to thin our oils more than before to make sure that the top layer doesn't crack while the polymerization goes on. As we said, there are things that are much easier to rework than paint in the first phase. Like, for example, this line at the bottom of the teapot's handle. We did try to paint it, but at the end it disappeared while we were blending the colors in this area. We can paint it now and it will be much easier. We can also work on the handle reflex, working both the black and the white. We can reduce the size of this reflex here on the handle. Now, we're going to work on this dark side and then we're going to represent these loopholes. Using some white, we're going to represent the second reflex here on the handle, and we're going to fix it using some black. We're going to rework this area, where we're going to start bringing some brown, and then using some tan, we're going to represent these lines. Then, using some brown, we're going to work on this area here and we're going to darken this area here on the bottom of this reflex. Now, we're going to rework this area. Here, we have used some dark brown, while on our scene we have these silk reflexes. We're going to use some Prussian blue to represent the silk waves. We're going to use some middle light blue to work on the wave peaks and we're gonna blend them. This job that it's very easy now would be very difficult to carry out if both colors were fresh. Now we're gonna move our attention on the silk where we're going to try to increase the contrast between the dark and the bright sides. We're gonna use some Prussian blue to darken the dark sides and some white to lighten the bright sides up. Here, we're gonna use some Prussian blue, and also here, and we're gonna use some white here. We're gonna darken this area, and then using some tan, we're going to rework the connection between the silk and the table. Now, we're gonna move our attention on the cup, where using some white, we're going to work on the bright sides and then we're gonna blend and fade some gray on the dark sides. We're gonna work on the apple, first using some white here on this reflex, then using some Naples yellow to lighten up the bright side, and some crimson red for the dark sides. We're going to work on the coffee and the cup reflections on the teapot, and 
we're going to call this first representative work complete. But I'm sure if we keep searching, we're going to find other things that, in our opinion, would work to be improved. If we watch our painting once it's dry, we can notice that some area is quite matte, while the rest is quite glossy. Most of the time, these matte areas appear on the reworks. If we want to solve this problem, we can let our painting be there for a few days until it gets dry, and then do an additional process called oil out, where, using a large and very soft brush, we're going to spread on the external surface of our painting one or more layers of medium. The medium we choose for this process is very important because, as we said when we discussed them, the linseed oil tends to get yellow under the light's effect, while the poppy seed oil is more resistant. If we want to preserve the colors of our work, we should use the poppy seed oil. Well, if we don't mind a light touch of yellow on our paintings, we can choose the linseed one. In this case, we're going to use the linseed oil. We have to repeat this process until the external surface is exactly like we want it. It's time now to draw some conclusions. If we go back and piece by piece we check the scene that we have used as model, comparing it with what we have painted, we should have noticed that we did everything different. We changed the, the colors, the local shapes, and most of the things that we had in our original scene. Also, the sketch that we did wasn't accurate, but still our work at the end looks like a decent representation. So, don't be afraid. Choose a subject, make your own sketch, prepare the palette, then follow the method that we have shown here, and you get your painting done. Just remember what we have said when we have talked about perception when you choose your subject and you will be fine. At the end, the decision we make during the representative analysis defines our style. And it's time now for you to find your own style. In this course, we have illustrated a method. Now, how you decide to proceed, it's up to you. This video course, Representative Oil Painting Fundamentals, is complete now but we will have other videos later to cover different aspects of this technique. Starting from the next video, for those who want to see a different way to paint representative, we're going to talk about Neometaphysic. If you enjoyed this video, we will really appreciate if you could click on like and subscribe to our channel. It will also help us very much if you could leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.